Hey guys, Brendan here, brendanvaleski.com, and in this video, you're going to learn everything about e-commerce SEO. When it comes to e-commerce SEO, it's super, super important when you're building out your online store that it is search engine optimized. That's what SEO stands for, and you guys definitely don't want to miss out on all of that free organic. Well, people say it's free, but really it's earned because it takes a lot of energy to actually uh, make it all happen, but you definitely don't want to miss out on that search engine traffic. Traffic. And search engine traffic especially is of the highest converting because people have the buyer's intent, they are looking to purchase items, so why not be there as a source and a beacon of value to where you can provide them that list, right? That helpful list of, hey, you know, top 10 this, right? Top five that. It's an excellent, excellent way to provide value to people, just like a lot of uh, people in the tech space on YouTube provide value that way and then recommend uh, Amazon affiliate products. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about more uh, how to build e-commerce SEO for your own uh, web store, not just Amazon affiliate, because I'm actually gonna be going through as well why it's better to you know use your own e-commerce store if you are currently doing Amazon affiliate uh, through your e-commerce SEO based business. That is, uh, this is kind of like the next step there to make a lot more profit because Amazon at the end of the day is gonna keep you know, hitting, hitting people harder and harder. They had it at a 10% affiliate. It goes down to like a 4%, a 1% on some categories. You really don't know. It let's, you know, take that control back into your own hands and build out a really, really great authority site where you own those people. They come in and they ultimately purchase your products that you're recommending to them. So how exactly do you go about doing this, right? How do you optimize yourself for e-commerce SEO? Now in this video, I'm not going to be going over all the nitty gritty on specific specific SEO details. That'll have to be a whole separate video about SEO specifically, but more in the niche of, you know, e-commerce SEOs, just e-commerce SEO. How do you go to get people from search engines like Google or Bing, uh, predominantly Google, of course. How do you get people from Google to find your products through searching, you know, I need this, right? Best this. Those are the kind of keywords that you definitely want to target for these types of posts that you're going to be making, which I'm gonna be laying it all out for you guys exactly how to do it. So the first thing to think about, right? You need your products in your store, right? What are some of the top sellers? What are keywords that people are searching for, right? What is the best um, what is the best uh, camera equipment? You know, at least for me, I just, you know, recently upgraded all my camera equipment. You know, what's the best camera equipment? That's something I searched for. I went, found some articles, found some other videos out there, and purchased the products. Now, it depends on the niche that you're in. If you're in the pet niche, people don't necessarily care as much about the brand. This is really a thing that you're going to have to consider within your niche if this kind of methodology will work better for your business or if it won't. Uh, if, you, if you're in the, you know, if you're in the pet niche, people, like I said, people don't necessarily care about the brand. They more so just really want that product. If it's going to be a good product, that's what they care about. Whereas in the tech space with the camera equipment, people are really, uh, a lot of times will care more about the brand itself, especially if they're spending a lot of money. So this strategy works the best for uh, impulse type products or specific products catering to a certain need that people have. This is what this kind of strategy works a lot better with in comparison to stuff where people are going to be spending like high ticket amounts, like on a brand new camera. You're not really going to be able to sell, uh, you know, unless you are doing Amazon affiliate, it's difficult to sell your own uh, products like sourced from uh, manufacturers like AliExpress, China, all that kind of stuff. It's hard to sell un quote unquote unbranded items through this type of methodology because these are more fo more so for the lower ticket items, maybe 15, 20, 30, 40 bucks. You can still make a good amount of money on those products. Uh, so this is what you wanna do. Do the best things, okay? So those are the keywords. So the number one thing first is figuring out the keywords that people are searching for, for those products, right? The specific keywords that people are going to be searching for. Okay, so it might be, like I said, best. So it might be best um, blank. Okay. It could be best, um, pet could be the best pet, um, caller. Okay. It could be, um, it could be also best led dog collar. There's actually a post that I saw, uh, I was studying another brand and they were actually utilizing the best led dog collar as a keyword. So there's a lot of different uh, keywords that you guys could actually target and go for all of course depending on the niche that you're in that is going to matter effectively on which ones but you're wanna you're gonna want to look for like best this 
best that because those are the keywords that people search when they have the buyer's intent which is what you want to go after right and why not get this through search engine marketing right why not get that optimize yourself for e-commerce seo so you're tar you're thinking about the keywords first this is the first step is kind of like step one okay is figure out the keywords that you actually want to go for that are most best related to the products that you sell so say for example you sell led dog collars okay well you're going to want to rank for people that search best led dog collar because then they can find your products of course uh if you're if you sell just regular pet collars maybe uh, you know, what are the best harnesses for a dog? Like there, there's a lot of things that you could go with and like I said, this does depend on your niche But this is just an example. Okay, so uh, best LED dog collar if you're selling LED dog collars boom There you go pet collars like I said another thing maybe a uh, best uh, dog bowl Okay, that could be another one best dog bowl. Uh, that's another example there. So best dog bowl That could be something that someone's searching for right, but it's not just the best keywords, right? Uh, it, it's not just those best keywords, although those are probably some of the best ones. <laughs> uh, one of the other one could be like top 10 or, or coolest, right? Coolest. Okay, pe people that are searching for lists. Excuse my handwriting if you can't necessarily read it, but that's why I'm saying it as well. Uh, so top 10, right? You could have coolest, okay? These are all of the different options that people might, you know, top 10 this, coolest that. Things people are searching for, right? They're searching and they need to find, I was trying to find the dry erase marker here. Okay, so the coolest this, the things people are looking for. They're looking for products to solve their problems, right? And if you can be that person that recommends them to the best product that you actually happen to sell, you're gonna make sales, okay? And I will go over the kind of tech, like how to, all, how to connect this more towards the end if you're wondering how to get this all kind of set up for your business. So go, starting with the, with the top layer here, the first steps to really understand this. Uh, so the keywords, right? Step one, coolest this, coolest that. Okay, now it doesn't necessarily have to be that, right? It could be uh, maybe a checklist type of thing that people are looking for. It, it, like I said, you're really gonna have to dig deep into your niche and figure out the specific problems that people are searching for on the keywords. Now, if you're looking for a keyword tool, uh, I typically would recommend uh, KW Finder. This is honestly the best thing that I found. It's just kwfinder.com. That is seriously the best keyword planner because it actually has a SEO difficulty score. And typically, you want to stay in the you know the 30 range, anywhere in the 30 or even below. But it's going to be hard for you to find keywords that are actually below 30. But anywhere in the 30s, right? The, anywhere in the 30s. Uh, maybe potentially in the 40s, but anything above that, especially as a newer site, is going to be very difficult for you to actually rank for. So I would stick, and the thing is in your articles too, uh, which we're going to get to how to how to kind of structure those and lay them out. It's going to be difficult, but you're going to start ranking for other like micro keywords within your posts as well. Uh, so don't necessarily worry about too much if if you know you're not ranking for that specific keyword you went for. But try to typically find things that aren't super, super crowded already. Like the, the keyword SEO is massively, like there's tons of searches, but for me to get up to the top there on SEO like is insane. And it's even a struggle for me to get with e-commerce SEO. Like I don't know how long this video may take to rank or the blog post I, I, I put together with it. Um, but regardless, it's, you know, you're putting it out there, okay? You're, you got to put out a lot of content. And you know you'll start ranking for micro keywords within there as well. So, but think generally around the 30 to 40s uh, range. Okay, below that it's going to be hard to find. Above that it's going to be too crowded. There's too many big players kind of already dominating. Uh, over time you could try and go for the higher difficulty scores, but in the beginning keep with the green. It, it also shows you on the KW Finder uh, website as well. It, it shows you. Uh, the level of difficulty and kind of explains it as well. You have a few free searches per day um, Unless you want to upgrade to the paid version, which I currently don't have I just use the free ones But I think you get like five to seven per day if you make an account So that's really all you need to get started. So just keep that in mind uh, when you're on there uh, So KW finder that is that the keywords It's gonna depend on your niche. It could be coolest. It could be um, You know, maybe a water filter something like that if you sell uh, water filtration devices Right, it could be a water filter on there. It, it could literally be almost anything 
uh, that you're trying to target for a keyword, but it needs to be something related to obviously your e-commerce products that you actually sell. Okay, so figure that out first. That's the first step before you actually dive into writing the article and then embedding your products for people to buy. So first step, keyword, figure that out, right? Got the keyword, once you pick one of those, which I typically recommend the, like the best and then that, because the, list, the lists are honestly the, the highest converting. It's the people that are like, okay, I need this specific item, uh, best blah, 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 best, best, uh, best camera, or I wouldn't say cameras because those are higher ticket, but maybe best LED flashlight or best uh, LED dog collar, best, uh, best dog bowl. Okay, there's a lot of different things you can do uh, and then recommend people your products. So there you go. So that's the first bit here in the keywords. You figure out the keyword, that's the first step. Okay, so then step two, put that over here. Step number two, okay, is to actually write the article. So you're gonna write out the article. So you're gonna structure this article, okay? And, and, and it needs to obviously be SEO optimized. That's a whole separate post. I'm gonna briefly go over SEO optimization within this uh, video and post, but basically write the article, okay? So you structure it in, in a format, you know, this is your article here. So you have your article on your website. Um, now, if you are using Shopify, you can write this as a blog post within the blog post section on the Shopify platform. Typically, I actually recommend having a separate website for your blog, like your main website is your blog. Uh, which would be WordPress is what I would recommend for that. You use WordPress for your blog. It's a lot, way better SEO optimization within WordPress, all the plugins in there. Yoast SEO, if you, if you don't already know about that, you can use that for your WordPress blog and that's gonna get you way, 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 way better SEO optimization to further recommend your products. And then you just sell your products on your e-commerce store. You could do it as a subdomain as well. I recently just set this up the whole subdomain thing, I didn't have that set up before, but the whole subdomain thing, you can do like store dot, uh, you know, your website dot com. You could also do shop dot your, your domain dot com. So you could set up a, a subdomain and then, you know, have your main website, just your www and your main website, right? Your bread and butter where you're getting all of your SEO traffic from would be a WordPress site and that would be just under the www.yourdomain.com, okay? So this is like what you could do for your e-commerce store where you actually sell your products and focus your entire e-commerce store just around conversion and then focus your blog more so just about giving value and helping lead people to your products effectively. So that is the uh, structure that I would recommend for the actual sites uh, themselves before actually diving into how to structure the blog post. Think about that, you can do it all on one website as well. It, it depends on your setup, but this is typically the setup that I would recommend. It's what a lot of other popular, uh, very big brands, naturallycurly.com if you're, if you're in the curly hair space. Um, there's also survivallife.com that sets it up like that. That is from Digital Marketer, one of the you know billion dollar corporation runs with the whole store.com and then the blog on WordPress is on the www.com. Because you have a lot more uh, freedom with funnels and setting up your blog posts, your website. Just a lot more freedom with WordPress and then you can have your e-commerce store on Shopify and sell your products that way. So you're, you're leveraging both platforms, which is really the best setup personally. Um, so that's what you would do there. So you can go ahead and get that set up. Um, under under your subdomains to set up the different uh, you know websites within the different uh, platforms. WordPress is the is the main traffic generator, and then you have your store, which will get some SEO traffic, but mostly just you're hosting your products on there. So how do you actually write the article then to get the e-commerce SEO that you want? Right? How do you sell your products through articles? So like I said, let's just use this example as best um, LED dog collar. Okay, so this could be an article, best LED dog collar, or best LED dog collars you you must have, right? You wanna add some sort of, <laughs> not quote unquote clickbait, but something that people will, when they search stuff, it's like, oh, I need the, uh, the best top, you know, the best LED dog collars you must have 
um, that could be quite beneficial. Best LED dog collars must have. Oh, I got to figure this out. I got to know this, right? When people are searching on Google, you make your, your uh, focus keyword best LED dog collar or dog collar or best dog collars, probably with the S. Uh, so you could have best LED dog collars. That would be your focus keyword. That's a very micro niche, okay? You want to go very micro niche on these types of keywords because, you know, especially when you're starting out, you're not going to be able to rank for just best of dog or just dog collar. Like dog collar probably gets like 40,000 searches or maybe more. I could be, could be completely wrong. It could be like 200,000 searches a month, which is absolutely insane to try and rank for. So you want to go more specific, right? Best LED dog collars. And then you must have is just to kind of get people to click, okay? So this is your more keyword optimized. You kind of have to go 50-50 with this. You need, you need like 50% to be like keyword optimized and then the other 50% just to, to mostly get people to, you know, move their little mouse cursor and actually, it's supposed to be an asterisk, and make the click, okay? So 50% is for the click, 50% is for the actual, um, the actual thing itself. It could be maybe more like an 80-20 split. You, you really need the keyword in there to be at the very front. If you're using Yoast SEO, which is what I would recommend, uh, Yoast SEO, this is a, a WordPress plugin. So Yoast SEO is what you can use to help optimize, focus your keywords. And it'll tell you all the uh, SEO optimization stuff. Like I don't need to repeat that in this video. Yoast will basically show you what to do and it'll give you like a little green bar. Like if you're good, you know, if you're good, it'll give you a green bar. If you're red and bad or orange, it'll give you like a down. So you just use Yoast SEO to figure out exactly how to set that up. But that, that's basically the general structure, okay? So best LED dog colors, you must have 50% for the click, 50% just for the SEO. Like I said, it might be a little bit different from that. But that's kind of what you want to go with. So that is your, your top line, right? You're writing the article. So how do you write the article, right? How do you structure it? So you have your little H1 tag at the top, which depends on the theme that you're using. It should by default, which this is the um, H1 tag. Uh, if you can see that there, you only want one H1 tag per article. That is what Google finds your content through. If you're having multiple H1 tags, it, Google's gonna screw you, like you're gonna get screwed up, okay? So it, by default, a lot of themes, Shopify does this as well, uh, you know, WordPress themes or Shopify stuff, it'll by default make the, the title of the page the H1 tag. So you don't really have to worry about this, but if you're going in and adding extra headings like H2s, H3s, make sure that they are H2, H3, H4 for your little subheadings, right? So you have your main heading, you know, you have another heading here, and then another subheading here, a subheading here, a subheading here, which you're going to be doing as well when you're when you're making your your posts, right? You're listing out the best LED dog collars you must have, so you're definitely going to be using subheadings like this is number one, number two, number three, number four. You could list them out with numbers. You could do just the titles of the products. Um, just depends on what you want to do. Maybe just do the title of the product, but you know, that would be, the second one here would be like an H2. This could be also an H2. If you maybe have mini subheadings, that would be like an H3. Um, the mini subheadings would be your H3s. Uh, the main subheadings would be your H2s. So hopefully that clears that up if you're not sure about that as well. Uh, you go ahead and put your article in. So how do you structure the product selling, okay? So effectively, if you're doing this within WordPress or whatever platform you're using, uh, typically I would recommend WordPress. You really, really want to have your own self-hosted platform that you can really rely on and WordPress is like the industry standard is pretty much the best. So within e-commerce, okay, within your articles, you basically want to lay it out with like an intro at the top, right? Little intro, like, hi, blah, blah, blah. This is what you're going to learn. Okay. This is, this is what I'm going to give to you today. This is, you know, you got to hook them in some sort of manner. Be like, you know, you're going to get this awesome list. Boom. You're about to read this this amazing thing, okay? So then you list it out like one, two, three, uh, four, you know, your different products, one, two, three, four. And basically each single one that you do, you know, you, you kind of introduce pros and cons. You know, you could do a pros, cons type of thing. That's what I've seen some people do. Uh, other people also just kind of list out the bullet points. It's another thing you could uh, go with. You could just go bullet points on them. Uh, but each little one, two, three, four, is going to effectively, you're not trying to sell people, you're, you're selling the product passively. 
And this is the whole benefit of this strategy because you're not just like pushing your products in front of people. It's not just like Facebook ads where you're just shoveling your product down people's throats. They don't necessarily want it. This is the people that are literally searching to want this product. So they're gonna read your article they're gonna be more interested, okay? So you don't really have to hard sell them. Like, you're not trying to be like, hey, buy my product, hey, buy my product. Like, that's not what you're doing. You're trying to give value to people. You're trying to explain to them, oh, okay, so um, this is this really cool, <laughs> I could write the little, so you want you to put your products on the right, just because um, that's generally how the human eye works. You read on the left, you read you read left to right, at least in America, most people read left to right, okay? Or in other countries, a lot, a lot of people read left to right. It's just how the human eye psychology perceives things. It makes it, makes it a lot easier to read. So, yeah, and, and you're gonna have to figure out your formatting, what kind of font you wanna use. Uh, just make sure everything on this page, by the way, the, the font that you use, uh, the sizing, it, it's just, make sure it's readable, okay? Make it. Make it narrow, like uh, move the content box. Generally, more narrow is easier to read. You don't want it all. You don't want this page like all the way out to here and have your text like way out. Like it's very hard to read that. So you want to make sure you scrunch your margins to be very narrow, so that it's more easy to read. It's what a lot of people do. You want to make it almost like a cell phone on the computer if people are on desktop, which a lot of people using Google are on desktop. But I think Google actually just more people using mobile now, but you want to make it look very, very clean. Okay, very easy to read. It makes sense. It's it's a, very easy to read. Effectively, is what you're trying to do. So you have your products on the right and on the left. You're giving value. You're talking about the product. What could be the benefit? You're 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 you. If you're basically low key selling them on it, but it needs to be good. Okay, if you think about the Wolf of Wall Street movie, sell me this pen. Okay, why do you need this pen? Right? Oh, it's such an amazing, oh, this is the best pen. I love this pen. I really like, no, you don't want to go, I love this pen. This is, I love this collar. You want to speak more like, you could find this, this marker, you know, how do you write your most import, important documents, right? Ask them questions maybe at the top of these. Uh, you know, how, you know, you're basically trying to identify problems. You are selling, but a, I'm saying selling as in a good way. Selling is not supposed to be, buy this, buy this, buy this. Selling is supposed to be, no, what's your problem? Oh, how can I help you, right? So that's kind of how you need to approach these articles. It takes a lot of art to understand how to, uh, you know, copywriting and all that kind of stuff. You're not really making like an optimized sales page. This is just a blog post, but it needs to be somewhat optimized to where people are not, you, you need to think about the person, okay? Think about the person, give them value. And it's hard for me to really explain that completely in this video because it does take a lot of practice to really get that down. But don't use the word I, you know, unless you're telling like a personal story, then you can. But typically with products, you know, unless you're telling a personal story, I would save a personal story with the product to like a secondary image below. And that's what I've done a bit. It works definitely quite well um, because it gives a little bit more context, right? So you add a secondary image underneath here um, and, and you could also add like a video maybe. You could embed a video, maybe just some YouTuber who, uh, like there's a YouTube video maybe out there already that someone reviewed the product that you have. And especially when you're doing drop shipping, if, if that's how you choose to fulfill your products, uh, a lot of these products are sold, you know, a lot. Like a lot of people have access to these products and you can sell them. So people have potentially already done reviews on the products that you're selling. So you could import those reviews here and that kind of gives an unbiased uh, opinion on the specific product. So if you're selling products that are already popular and you see it, okay, but you could just you know resell it. You're basically a retail dropshipping store uh, and you're giving value to them, embedding other review videos on the products so that people can make a better informed decision and you know, if you're using Shopify, I would just add a buy button. So all you have to do is add a sales channel within Shopify to add these, like to make these HTML uh, buyable uh, boxes for products, which is really, really cool. Um, so it's just like, it's just buy button is what it's called on Shopify. And you add a sales channel. Okay, so you're adding a sales channel and then your sales channel is your WordPress blog basically giving value through this blog post, okay? So your sales channel is this buy button with your WordPress blog. 
that's how you add it within Shopify. There's a, there's a lot of other things you can do depending on what platform you're using. If you're using WooCommerce, if you're using uh, all the other streams of different e-commerce platforms out there, uh, you, you want to embed some sort of buy button with a product image. And, and you can do that really easily. You just add this as a sales channel. So it, it's pretty straightforward. It's actually, it looks super, super clean. Um, and that's what I would recommend to do because then it gives the option to where people don't have to leave your site to buy the product. They can buy it all within your site if you have a really good HTML uh, thing, which the, the, the companies provide you with. Shopify provides you with the HTML to, auto, to add your products in here per each. And the reason why this strategy is, is a lot of people, see the thing is a lot of people run with this strategy, right? A lot of people are using this, this quote unquote tactic of, you know, giving value, helping people out with reviewing, you know, giving product lists. A lot of people do this, okay? It's not anything drastically new that I'm bringing to the table here. The difference is, is instead of just linking out to Amazon, right, instead of just linking out to Amazon and getting uh, 1%, right, because I know some of the percents are really dang low now, 1% to 10%, and I know it's under 10%. On most of them, most of them are probably around a four uh, percent percentage that you actually get in your pocket if you're writing these articles. If maybe you already have a, a blog that's getting a lot of traffic, if you're all, you know, sometimes you do have to just Amazon affiliate out if it's a product that you can't personally stock or sell. Of course, then you do Amazon affiliate. But most people, they are only doing Amazon affiliate, and they never think about selling their own dropship products or even stocking them themselves like the, because basically with Amazon you're driving all the traffic to them you're driving all the traffic to them away from yourself so you're you're giving them the customer details you're giving them everything they want and they own you basically you're just sending all your, at least you own your website and your blog and your traffic which is awesome uh, good on you for doing that okay that's amazing but if you're just sending it all to Amazon, like you're definitely losing a lot of potential revenue uh, for a lot of niches. Uh, it's selling an LED dog collar. The thing is, those LED dog collars are very easy to get from AliExpress and sell them on your own store. Okay, it's very easy to drop ship those products and sell them on your own store. Uh, the thing, and most of the people on Amazon that are selling those are just drop shipping them anyway. They're sending the products from China to Amazon. So why not cut out that person making profit? And while you're only getting one to ten percent and only a four percent margin, and sell it yourself, and guess what? You go from a one to ten percent or four percent margin on a sale, on a blog post when someone finds the product and actually decides to. Sorry, the camera stopped recording there. I had to reset it. So, like I was saying here, instead of getting only a one to ten percent to a four percent money in your pocket when someone decides to convert on your blog post because they found your list and they're like, oh yeah, I need that. I need that specific product. They want to buy it. Instead of just getting a one to ten percent, four percent, you're getting now instead, you know, you're getting like a seventy percent margin. Okay, that is a little bit bold to say, but on dropshipping products, a lot of the times you're probably going to get like a seventy percent margin. You're not paying for ads right here. You you are literally just providing valuable content, ranking in SEO. Okay and getting people to then, oh, I, I like this product on this list, I'm gonna just go buy that. It, it takes them to your e-commerce store, your Shopify store, whatever platform you're using, they hit the bot, they hit the add to cart button, they buy it right on this page, and boom, you just made like a 70% margin on that same product that they would have bought from Amazon that you could probably stock yourself. I mean, a lot of products that are sold on Amazon are just Chinese products that you can stock yourself, uh, whether it's through dropshipping or you know however you decide to do that, 70%. Okay, instead of making, like say say it's like a $15 product, right? Say it's only a $15 product, okay? Instead of only making one to 10% to 4% on that, you're making 70% of the money. 70% when you sell it yourself. And you get the customer details when they enter their email on there and they buy the product and you can follow up with them and sell them more stuff. So this is like the ultimate route where you own the traffic and you own the products in the store. Yeah, there might be a little bit more work with customer service and yeah, maybe you have to deal with a little bit of refunds here and there, but overall, you're going to make a lot, lot more money. You can sell them more stuff down the road. You have their email now. Just a lot more cool stuff that you can do.
uh, you, you, you're end, endless opportunities here, okay? Whereas to just sending them to Amazon, you're just sending them off into Amazon's funnel. You're sending them into Amazon's ecosystem. Why not, you know, cut out Amazon, cut out the middleman of Amazon and all the sellers on there that Amazon really, frankly, just wants to fulfill their own stuff. They, they're, they're trying to cut down the margins that you make every single day. They're trying to cut that 10% down to 4%, it'll be 2%. I don't even know if they, they might not, they might get rid of Amazon affiliates eventually. I honestly don't know. So instead, you can own your own system and send all the traffic instead to Amazon to your own e-commerce store. Now, I know this isn't a revolutionary concept, but it is, it's amazing, okay? It's a way higher percent margin that you can make. Way, 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 infinitely better. You own the customer infinitely, infinitely better. Okay, you can see why this process is way better to send them to your own store instead of just sending them to Amazon. Okay, that's the big difference here with this tactic, this strategy of doing the whole SEO blog post and then sending people to your own e-commerce store. That's kind of how you do it. You do your best of the list, you do your best of the list of this or that or your comparisons, you know, this versus that, however you want to rank your articles. Okay, it's going to take a long time to start getting your domain up. But like I said, you just get people to your main blog domain, your main www. You know, your website.com, your brand, whatever your brand name is, and you funnel them to your store. It's an amazing, amazing system. You own the customers, you own the traffic, you own everything. You own every single step of the way that these people are going through. Okay, so definitely consider and potentially implement this into your business because it will definitely make an improvement because this is, I mean, this is ultimately earned traffic. Like once you build up, so let me, let me erase this here. If you got this already, it's, it's simply amazing because once you build out, right, you build out one. All right. So step three, this is kind of like the scaling aspect, right? So step three, this is like the next level guys. If you're watching all the way through to this part in the video, you are amazing. Okay, like the video if you haven't liked this dang video already. Got to get that engagement up. Okay, so step three, this is the scaling, the scale, and potential opportunity that this can provide you right in your business. So when you're building out your main authority website, so it's your www. Dot your, you know, domain, right? Your 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 thing. Dot com. Okay, when you you're you know, your brand, right? When you build out that authority site, okay? And then you, and then you're sending people, you know, to your store as well, dot, you know, blank.com. You know, you're effect, effectively sending people to your, to your store as well. Okay. But the main thing is you're building up the traffic from Google into your domain.com and then you're linking people out to your store. Okay. So that's effectively the system there. But when you do this effectively, you build one blog post over here of the best LED dog collars, right? That's one blog post. Okay. You build out another blog post and not all of these are going to get a lot of traffic, right? That's, that's the thing. Not all of them are going to get a lot of traffic. But when you build out, you know, I don't know why I drew this one a little wider, but you got three. Okay. You got three. Now let's say you add another blog post, right? You keep adding more of these little assets. These are mini assets here that are all like best list of this, best of that, best of that. These all continue to keep ranking in SEO. Okay, I have an old video on an old channel talking about Shopify cost, all right? I, to this day, still get a consistent viewers every single day on that video because it ranks in SEO, okay? So e-commerce SEO is the same process. You know, YouTube, if you do YouTube videos, you could even do, you know, these don't necessarily have to be blog posts. They could be YouTube videos as well that are like, best this, you know, a lot of those tech YouTubers that are like, you know, best top five tech. Like I, I know that stuff just cause I follow, you know, tech people and you know, cameras and all that kind of stuff. Cause I'm kind of a nerd about that. Um, that's like a one little micro niche that I'm kind of into. It's, it's actually really popular, but regardless, I, I digress. You could also have these as YouTube videos too, and then link out to your store from there. I would typically, you're going to probably have a better chance at really making this all work a lot better if you're doing the blog post system because you're going to get your website ranking versus kind of just ranking YouTube. Uh, you can embed YouTube videos into your blog posts. It depends on the strategy. I would 
probably recommend doing the the blog post website method a little bit more than the YouTube stuff, uh, just because you get more people to your opt-in and all that kind of stuff. But it just depends on how you want to do it. You build an audience, you build an audience. Like I built this channel up, like it's you're just you're giving value to people, okay? So effectively, what however you do it, okay? However you decide to do it, whether you're blog posts, videos, you're building all these little asset engines up that rank in Google, rank in SEO, okay? These posts will continue to get traffic, continue to get traffic over time. It snowballs. When you build all of these things up, okay, you know what that means? You're making bank off of each little one. Each of these produce cash, okay? You get a this marker. Uh, you get a sale, maybe, you know, you get a sale here, get a sale there on these on these lists. Oh, I, I wanted that uh, little collar for my dog. Or I wanted this little doggy backpack or something. I, I'm just using dogs as, as a fun example. Um, so you have the cash coming in from all these different blog posts, all these little lists, okay? These buyer intent type keywords that people are searching for to find your products. Effectively, you're like, you know, you know, you're kind of selling them on your product when they find your little list of like, why, oh, this is cool, oh, I want that. All of those continue to get more traffic. You keep writing more blog posts, you keep putting the content out there, you're giving more value to people. And over time, they keep, they keep building your email list, right? Your email list over here for people that opt in on the, on the page, maybe they don't buy anything, but they still opt in for your free little checklist or your free PDF or your, your quiz or depending on the niche, whatever you're giving away, your free offer, those are all building people to your email list and building people to sales that might just buy right off the page, which will be a good amount of people because you're focusing on keywords that are around buying behavior, people that are trying to find that list. Oh, what is the best this, best that? People a lot of times will probably buy on your page, okay? So uh, especially if you develop good trust with them in your post, in your video, they're gonna buy straight from there, okay? That's the thing with Amazon, that's like a little bit of the comparison there. Some people are like, oh, but if I just do Amazon, people will trust Amazon. While that's true, people do trust Amazon, you can build up trust as well. You don't have to just rely on them to provide trust of selling stuff. You know, you can provide a good enough value proposition there with your own posts and you could be that cool dude who's giving them the best list oh you just get it right here people want no friction they want quick fast and easy if you can make it quick fast and easy if they can buy straight from your blog post page which you can do with Shopify and importing that into your WordPress blog site people can buy all from one page if people could just get it right there real quick and easy like boom a lot of people don't have a lot of you're saving them time and energy okay and you're not linking them out to another site. If you're linking them out to another site, a lot of times they co don't come back. So if they all buy on your site, boom, right there in the one page, there's a very high chance that they will, it's a higher chance they will convert. The less steps that a customer has to go through to get what they want, to get the product, the thing that they're searching for, right? The best this, the best that, you're gonna get a lot of conversions from those blog posts uh, a lot, okay? Because there's the carry over there is very low. It's boom, click, oh, I can buy right here. Boom, boom, boom. Easy, quick, fast, okay? Good, it's very easy, all right? It's like, it's it's a very simple process. You wanna make the buying experience as easy as, as possible for your customers. Now, this whole system is not easy. It, it's simple, okay? It's simple, oh, right, blog posts, okay, embed products, right? Uh, and then you sell, you sell them through them, okay? And you build your email list. You're gonna have to do like, a lot of these articles, but over time, long term, right? We're in this for the long haul. You will slowly, slowly build up all these little assets and they will slowly start to get you more traffic to your site. You can really build a massive authority site to where you dominate that space and you grab up all the traffic of people searching for those keywords. So that's kind of the whole system here. That's how you scale it over time. You just write more blog posts, make more videos, uh, however you're getting your content out there, you recommend those products within there, you get your people on your email list because you don't want to just get recommend the products and then all the people that left the page that maybe were just a hair, they needed a hair more trust. They can opt in for your email list, get some cool stuff, they get to know you a little bit more, maybe they'll go back and buy the product. They go to your store and they, they buy more products from you because they like you. They're like, oh, I like this dude, he's giving me cool, more free, valuable stuff. It's the same exact system that I build with this YouTube channel as well with my personal brand, okay? I'm giving value to you guys. 
I, you know, maybe you buy something for me. Maybe you want my course. Maybe I don't care if you don't need it. If you don't want it, buy it, right? Like, I'll still give you guys free value. You get all the free stuff you want, okay? If you want to up, get that content upgrade, cool, awesome. Like, I appreciate you, but you don't have to, right? I'm not shoving it down your throat. Like, if you want to, cool. If you don't, then all right then. You know, it, it is what it is. And that's the same system. You know, it's the same for any business, really. Uh, but you set that up here with the e-commerce stuff. That's kind of how you relate it here with the e-commerce SEO. Get those blog posts cranking and you start selling more products. All right. So I hope you found this video very helpful. Definitely feel free to check out my main website, which is just brennanvaleski.com. Uh, that will be linked below as well. If you want to get access to that, it'll be uh, somewhere on screen here. You can get access to my free uh, product list and stuff like that. If you're trying to decide what kind of products to sell, uh, maybe you, you aren't really sure what makes a good product sell. So yeah, if you're interested in that, cool. You know, you know, subscribe, hit the notification bell as well. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, comments, concerns. But anyway, guys, I thank you for spending your time here with me today. Brendan here, brendanvaleski.com, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.